everyone. In the last class, uh, we had the discussion on uh, openings in uh, laminated rocks. And uh, we discussed that uh, depending upon how these lamina for in the laminated rocks, uh, they are oriented. Based upon that, we defined various cases and we saw that what all are the appropriate support system in each of those that can be uh, provided in the roof as well as in the side walls. So, today we will uh, start a new topic which is the elastoplastic analysis of uh, tunnels. So, in this one uh, we will be doing the analysis uh, following two uh, criteria. One is the Tresca yield criterion and another one is uh, uh, the more Coulomb failure criterion. So, as of now whatever that we discussed we considered the rock to be an elastic medium which may not be the situation. So, in case if the rock is behaving like a elastoplastic material how to do the analysis uh, for the tunnels that we are going to learn. So, as a first step we are going to consider the circular tunnel and today we will take up uh, the part of uh, the analysis using Tresca yield criterion. So, first we learn about the problem, then we will discuss about the geometry, loading condition, material property and the boundary conditions uh, as far as uh, this analysis is concerned. So, when we say that we are going for the elastoplastic analysis, so basically our focus is on the determination of the stress distribution around a circular tunnel following the elastoplastic uh, analysis. That means that we are going to consider the rock as uh, the elastoplastic material. So, this problem corresponds to a problem of a circular hole in an infinite plate. Here we are going to consider that the rock is incompetent rock and hence we can safely assume that this type of rock is sufficiently plastic to deform without fracturing. So, what kinds of rock can exhibit uh, such type of behavior? Some of these include uh, shales, phyllites, slates, limestones or dolomite especially at high temperature, pressure and depths. So, therefore, it is extremely important for us to uh, have the idea about this elastoplastic analysis. So, first coming to the geometry of the problem. So, here you see that we have the uh, ground surface and uh, this is assumed to be an intact rock which is not the situation in the field. In the field what you get is the rock mass, but then to start with we are making this assumption that the excavation is made in intact rock. The excavation is circular in shape having the radius A as has been shown in the figure. Any point in the rock medium is represented by the coordinate system R comma theta where R is the radial distance as has been shown by this line here and theta be the angle that is measured from this horizontal axis in the anti-clockwise direction. What happens when you excavate the opening may be using the blasting or some other way, some other method. There is going to be a zone where the rock will be loosened because of the excavation of this uh, opening. So, that area I am calling as the loosened rock and we assume that the zone between this excavation circular opening and up to the end of this loosened rock it is in plastic zone and beyond this there is again the existence of the elastic zone and therefore, this blue color line it shows you the elastoplastic boundary as has been written here. Now, we have 
some assumptions which are made, I will come to that little later. But then first assumption that we are going to have here is that because of the symmetry of loading boundary condition geometry, what we are expecting is that this elastoplastic boundary will also have a circular shape and therefore, its radius is defined by this alphabet C. Coming to the loading aspect, it is considered that there exists the hydrostatic in situ state of stress. So, all the basic equations are going to be the equations of equilibrium, compatibility and strain displacement relations and these all must be satisfied. If you recall when we discussed about the elastic analysis or when we were finding out the stress distribution uh, for the elastic case uh, for a circular tunnel, there also we considered uh, the similar type of basic equations like equations of equilibrium compatibility and strain displacement relation. So, we are going to make use of the similar equations. The only difference is going to be that now we are going to use some kind of elastoplastic uh, uh, yield criterion. Uh, to define the behavior of the rock. In the case of uh, this uh, situation elastoplastic analysis, what we are considering is that the rock which is surrounding the periphery of the cavity or the opening, it gets loosened to some extent and it yields and therefore, there is a development of a plastic zone. And as I explained that we define the radius of boundary between elastic and plastic zone by the alphabet C. As far as plastic zones uh, zone is concerned, a uh, state of stress which is developed is such that it equals or exceeds the yield stress of the rock immediately surrounding the periphery of the cavity. That means, that the material yield condition is satisfied and therefore, the rock enters into the plastic state up to a radial distance r to be equal to c which is defined by the elastoplastic boundary. Now, as I mentioned that being the geometry loading and the boundary condition all symmetric, we can safely assume this elastoplastic boundary to be circular in nature and the elastic perfectly plastic response uh, is assumed which is characterized by a yield stress. So, how are we going to define this yield stress? So, say rock immediately surrounding the cavity, it follows the Tresca yield criterion. It is not necessary that always it will follow this yield criterion. There, there are n number of uh, failure criterion uh, that we have discussed uh, somewhere in some of the earlier lectures uh, in this course like Tresca, then uh, more coulomb hook and brown and there are many so here in this particular case what we are going to uh, take is that that the rock is uh, following uh, the tresca yield criterion now how should we define this yield criterion that will say about the property of the material so here comes the material properties that is beyond the elastoplastic boundary, the surrounding rock will behave in an elastic manner. But in the plastic zone, there is going to be the Tresca yield criterion which is the maximum shear stress criterion. And you can see that in this figure, I have shown uh, the stress versus strain relationship that how this is going to look like. So, here up to the yield stress, this zone is elastic and beyond this it is in the 
plastic zone and why I am calling this as the maximum shear stress criterion means that this plastic zone is going to be defined when this sigma that is the stress reaches to the maximum value of this as the yield stress. As has been shown you see if you go beyond this strain is increasing but the stress remains the uh, same that is equal to the maximum stress or the yield stress. So, uh, what are going to be the state of stress in elastic zone and plastic zone let us uh, try to understand these. Uh, so, the state of stress uh, is going to be sigma r sigma theta then tau r theta which will be equal to 0 and sigma z for the tunnel in a state of plane strain. And in the elastic zone I am going to define these state of stresses as sigma r prime, sigma theta prime and sigma z prime and in the plastic zone I am going to define these as sigma r double prime, sigma theta double prime and sigma z double prime. So, this is what uh, is going to be the difference in the stresses. So, stresses in the elastic zone will have the single prime and il, uh, stresses in the plastic zone will be represented by the uh, typical uh, notation, but having the uh, double prime. So, in the elastic zone what we are going to have as far as the yielding is concerned that is going to be half sigma theta prime minus sigma r prime is going to be kappa which will define the yielding or we can write sigma theta prime minus sigma r prime would be equal to 2 kappa that is 1 a. But in case of the plastic zone what we are going to have is half sigma theta double prime minus sigma r double prime that would be equal to kappa in this case this is going to be gain yielding which is going to be continuous or we can write sigma theta double prime minus sigma r double prime to be equal to 2 kappa. This is equation number 1 b. So, let us write the equations of equilibrium in case of the polar uh, coordinates. So, we use uh, the polar coordinate system here. So, what we are going to have is del sigma r del r plus 1 upon r sigma r minus sigma theta plus 1 upon r del tau r theta del theta to be equal to 0 and we have 1 upon r del sigma theta del theta plus del tau r theta del r plus 2 upon r tau r theta this equal to 0. Now, we have seen that uh, tau r theta is equal to 0 and also due to symmetry there will be no change in the stress in theta direction. So, what does this mean? This will give me delta delta theta of sigma theta is going to be equal to 0. So, what will happen in the plastic zone?
what we will have as del del r of sigma r double prime plus 1 upon r sigma r double prime minus sigma theta double prime. Remember we assume that in plastic uh, zone how we are going to present the uh, state of stress. So, there we uh, decided that we will use double prime. So, this is going to be equal to 0 because tau r theta equal to 0 or we can have uh, uh, del del r of sigma r double prime that would be equal to 1 upon r sigma theta double prime minus sigma r double prime. So, I will mark this as equation number 2. Now, what will happen in elastic zone? So, in the similar fashion can we not write this del del r sigma r prime will be equal to 1 upon r sigma theta prime minus sigma r prime. Now, what is going to be the compatibility condition in elastic zone? Let us see compatibility condition in elastic zone that is going to be del 2 del r 2 plus 1 upon r del del r. So, this is the differential operator over sigma r prime plus sigma theta prime to be equal to 0. Because we are talking uh, about the elastic zone, so I am using these stresses having uh, the single prime. Now, these equations uh, are to be satisfied uh, subjected to appropriate uh, boundary conditions. So, with respect to the geometry that I have uh, shown here, let us try to define uh, those boundary conditions. So, these equations that we had in the previous uh, slides, uh, these are to be satisfied subjected to boundary conditions of the problem. So, let us define these. So, first of all uh, if we just take see uh, here uh, you have the plastic uh, zone. Okay, and beyond r equal to c you have the elastic zone. So, what will happen because it is the uh, stress free boundary because it is excavated. So, we are going to have sigma r double prime at r equal to a to be equal to 0. Make this as equation number 5 a. Then at elastoplastic boundary. So, in short I am writing as e dash p boundary. what does this mean? What is the value of r here? So, at elastoplastic boundary means this boundary and you see the value of r is c. So, at r equal to c, what we have there has to be the continuity of stresses. So, therefore, we will have whatever are these stresses just inside this boundary, the same are going to be just outside the boundary. So, what we are going to have is see inside the boundary you have the plastic uh, zone and outside the boundary you have the elastic zone. So, we have here sigma r double prime at r is equal to c minus. That means, it is although it is c, but little bit uh, inside uh, this uh, elastoplastic boundary. So, it is just c minus. So, this is going to be sigma r prime at r is equal to c plus. So, that the c plus and c minus they say that a point which is very very close to the elastoplastic boundary so that for all practical purposes we can take it at the elastoplastic boundary, but in one case it is in the plastic zone and in another case it is in the elastic zone. So, therefore, we are writing it like this. 
Similarly, we will have the same situation for sigma theta that is at r equal to c minus this is going to be sigma theta prime at r equal to c plus. I will mark these two equations together as 5p. Now, what will happen if you go at sufficient large distance from the uh, periphery of the cavity? So, at sufficiently large distance from periphery of the cavity what we are going to have is the elastic domain only. See, uh, because the plastic zone will exist only up to certain extent. Beyond that, it is again the elastic zone. So, when we have the sufficient large distance from the periphery of the boundary, we will have the elastic situation. So, in this case, what we are going to have is that sigma r prime, when r is tending to infinity, this is going to be equal to sigma theta prime at r tending to infinity and this is going to be equal to p because if you recall when we discussed about the loading condition I mentioned to you that we are going to have the hydrostatic state of stress. So, in this case as has also been shown in the figure that uh, all around this in situ stresses uh, they are there. So, in r direction as well as in the theta direction we have this as p. So, this is going to become the third boundary condition where this p is the applied hydrostatic stress. Of course, we know A is the radius of cavity and C is the radius of boundary between plastic and elastic zones. So, this is how we can define all the uh, boundary conditions and now using these boundary conditions we have to uh, solve all those equations of equilibrium and compatibility equation. Uh, to obtain the stresses all around the periphery and in the rock. So, this solution will involve the solution of equations of equilibrium which were given by equations 2 and 3 and subjected to the boundary conditions which we just saw that uh, given by uh, equation number 5. So, what we are going to do is uh, we substitute the yield condition uh, in the equation of equilibrium which is equation number 2 and see how it looks like. So, what we do is uh, we substitute the yield condition which is 1 b in equation number 2. Uh, so, what we get is that uh, del del r of sigma r double prime that is 1 upon r into 2 kappa make this as 6 a. Then if I integrate this equation what we will get? So, integrating this equation 6 a what we have is uh, sigma r double prime will be 2 kappa ln r plus a prime. A prime is the constant of integration which is to be obtained from appropriate boundary condition. So, let us apply the boundary condition. So, I use uh, the equation 5 a for this purpose. So, what we have is uh, uh, 2 kappa ln a plus a prime 
that would be equal to 0 because uh, uh, 5a stated that uh, uh, sigma r prime at r equal to a is going to be equal to 0. So, that is what that uh, we have here. So, from here I can say that a prime can be written as 2 kappa ln a with the negative sign here. So, just substitute it uh, a prime here in this equation. So, what we are going to get is sigma r double prime as 2 kappa ln r upon a. Make this equation as maybe say equation number 6. Now, I substitute this equation in equation number 1b. So, that I can obtain uh, sigma theta double prime also. So, substituting this equation 6 in equation 1 b. So, what I am going to get here as uh, sigma theta double prime to be equal to 2 kappa 1 plus ln r upon a. Mark this equation as equation number 7. Now, having once known this sigma r double prime and sigma theta double prime, of course, these are a state of stress in the plastic uh, zone. So, let us talk about what happens in the elastic uh, zone. So, here uh, I will take you back to the elastic analysis of the circular tunnel and there we saw that uh, we were getting the stresses of this form that is a plus b upon r square and we had this uh, sigma theta prime as a minus b upon r square. So, you can make it as 8a and 8b. So, from where these are coming, maybe you can refer to our discussion on the uh, elastic stress distribution around circular tunnel and you will get the idea. Now, you we substitute the boundary conditions at uh, r tending to infinity because there it is in the uh, elastic uh, zone. So, uh, substituting boundary conditions at r tending to infinity. What we have here is uh, uh, that sigma r prime is equal to uh, p. So, you just substitute it here. So, you see the first term will become uh, a and the second term in this equation will become equal to uh, 0 because r being uh, tending to infinity. So, therefore, this sigma r prime will be which is p as per the boundary condition and this will also become equal to a. Then I substitute the boundary condition at elastoplastic boundary that is uh, at r equal to c. So, what we have that is sigma r at r equal to c plus. So, r equal to c plus means we are in the elastic zone. So, I am going to have this as sigma r prime which will be equal to p plus b upon c square because I will substitute it here a is equal to p. So, that comes here plus b upon r is equal to c. So, that is b upon c square and this is going to be equal to sigma r at r is equal to c minus. What is this? This is sigma r double prime because now it, we are in plastic zone and how did we define this? We just derive 2 kappa ln r by a. So, r is c here. So, c by a. This is what that we are going to have now 9a. And then we can write the similar expression with reference to sigma theta 
at r equal to c plus is going to be sigma theta prime being in the elastic zone and this is going to be p minus b upon c square and this is going to be equal to sigma theta at r equal to c minus this will be sigma theta double prime and that is equal to 2 kappa 1 plus ln c upon a. So, this is how we apply the boundary condition at elastoplastic boundary where r is equal to uh, c. So, focus on this equation 9a and we try to simplify this uh, we can determine the uh, constant uh, b. So, I take this equation 9a and what I have from this is b upon c square is going to be equal to 2 kappa ln c upon a minus p and from 9b what we have is just substitute this b upon c square in equation 9b. So, we will have uh, p minus 2 kappa ln c upon a plus p equal to 2 kappa 1 plus ln c upon a. Now, if you just try to simplify this, uh, so what we will have is, so this will go p, so this will become 2p and 2 is here, 2 is here as well, so throughout it will get cancelled. So, what we have is p minus kappa ln c upon a, this is equal to kappa 1 plus ln c upon a or we can write p upon kappa two ln c upon a plus one or we have two ln c upon a is equal to p upon kappa minus 1 or ln c upon a will be p minus kappa upon 2 kappa or we can have c to be equal to a exponential of p minus kappa upon 2 kappa. So, this is how we can determine the radius of the elastoplastic boundary that is c. Now, I just substitute uh, these uh, the, the expression of this c here in this equation uh, what I am going to get is uh, b will become equal to uh, that is c square 2 kappa ln c upon a minus p. So, this is going to be a square e to the power e means exponential only. So, I will have 2 p minus kappa upon 2 kappa and then you have 2 kappa ln c upon a minus p here. So, this will become a square e p minus kappa upon kappa and then 2 kappa ln just substitute c again here. So, what we have is uh, a 
e to the power p minus kappa upon 2 kappa divided by a minus p. So, this will be a square e to the power p minus kappa upon kappa and it is going to be 2 kappa and see this a and a will get cancelled and this is ln and here it is exponential. So, we can directly write it as uh, p minus kappa divided by 2 kappa and then of course, minus p is there. So, uh, here we will get a very simplified expression that is uh, b as this will get cancelled and uh, this p will also get cancelled. So, this will become minus kappa a square e to the power p minus kappa upon kappa. So, make this equation as equation number 10 and we already have uh, this seat as a into e to the power p minus kappa divided by 2 kappa. This is equation number 11. So, basically this C it defines the distance to the elastoplastic boundary and we can see that it is the function of P kappa and A. Now, uh, let us focus on this uh, yield uh, kappa how to get this. So, the yield shear stress which is uh, kappa uh, this will be some fraction of the applied uh, stress. which is uh, the p. So, what we do is we assume that let this uh, kappa be h times p. Make this equation as equation number uh, 12. So, for the tunnel to be in the state of plane strain. Uh, so, for the tunnel to be in a state of plane strain. This sigma z prime will be equal to nu times sigma r prime plus sigma theta prime and uh, sigma z double prime which is in the plastic state that is going to be 0 0.5 times sigma r double prime plus sigma theta double prime. Uh, why this Poisson's ratio becomes uh, equal to 0.5? Because uh, in the plastic state, uh, the material becomes uh, incompressible and corresponding to any incompressible material, this Poisson's ratio becomes equal to 0.5. So, maybe you can write here that uh, in the plastic state, the material becomes incompressible and therefore, what you have is the Poisson's ratio as 0 0.5. So, this is how uh, the uh, state of stress uh, in the plane strain situation uh, for a tunnel can be written. So, this is how uh, the state of stress uh, can be written uh, for a tunnel in the uh, plane strain uh, condition. So, what we have seen that how using the appropriate boundary condition, we can solve the equations of equilibrium and the compatibility condition. And now, we will further see this analysis 
and then try to plot the stress distribution all around the periphery of the tunnel and then we will try to see some aspects that uh, what happens at the elastoplastic boundary or what happens when we move away from the elastoplastic boundary uh, to the uh, stress distribution radial as well as the tangential stress distribution. So, we will continue with our discussion in the next class. Thank you very much.